So, this is me <laughs> eating a gluten-free pancake with my colleague Maju, who also eats gluten-free pancakes. And we are both from Wikimedia Argentina. We are part of the Comparison and Decentralization Program at the Association. And hello, this is me. I'm Dr. Sarah Thomas. I'm a program manager at Wikimedia UK. Um, I don't mind getting my picture taken, but I tend not to like it too much. <laughs> so I have a tendency to hide behind Wikipedia merch. Uh, my re oh, no, no, it's totally fine. I do not mind at all. It's just for the sake of the joke. So, <laughs> uh, my remit is taking care of England, Scotland, uh, no, not England, um, everything but England, uh, Wales, uh, Northern Ireland, Scotland, uh, and volunteering right the way across the UK. And I'm also responsible for Wikimedia UK's train the trainer program. Yeah, we are both the leading team of the Volunteer Supporters Network, which is the experience we will tell you today. I like how I just completely forgot the title of the talk. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the first session of the day. So a little bit of history. Um, the Volunteer Supporters Network began in Wikimania 2014 in London with the aim of opening and maintaining communication channels between those in different chapters and affiliates, supporting volunteers in the Wikimedia community, including holding meetings and workshops and creating and sharing resources. My first experience of the Volunteer Supporters Network, the VSN, was at the meetup in Vienna in 2018. And I found the small community incredibly helpful for sharing experiences and offering peer support. I've worked in the charity and volunteering sector in the UK for a number of years. However, volunteering in the Wikimedia movement can be very different from that that you will find in other parts of the sector. And having an international community who understand those same differences, those things which make our movement unique, is really incredibly valuable. These early days of the network focused mainly on the annual meeting, uh, an annual chance to meet in person for a few days at a time to privately share our own experiences and challenges and learn from those of others. These meetings sometimes included a skillshare element with different members sharing short presentations and trainings on different topics and tools which might be particularly useful for those supporting volunteers within the movement. For example, Qualtrics for surveys, PetScan for making article lists for editing workshops, that kind of thing. And I still make use of many of the tools and tips that I've learned at VSN Skillshares. It is also a place where we can share our experiences. We were like leading volunteer teams. So it, is, it has to do with technical skills and with the skill sharings, but also with the place where we can understand what does it take to be a volunteer uh, community manager. And we saw that there was a, like a huge pandemic boom within the BCN because main, most of us got into the pandemic without having any idea of what to do when everything went virtual. Even if we work in an online and a digital movement, that very moment of our recent history, it was quite of astonishing. It was really surprising the, all the movement we had to do to create new spaces for people to meet in our local communities. So the BCM became like a very special place where we could get some ideas from others who were having the same problem around the globe. A little bit of funding history. Um, in 2022, Wikimedia Poland and Wikimedia Austria applied for and were granted a movement strategy implementation grant to support the running of the Volunteer Supporters Network. In 2023, Wikimedia UK and Wikimedia Argentina applied for the same grant to continue that work. These grants acknowledge the labour required for maintaining a network such as this and also look to the future of the VSN, which may speak to the idea of hubs within the movement. Part of the 2022 work done by Wikimedia Poland and Wikimedia Austria was to consult the community on the creation of a set of internal regulations, including clarity on membership of the group. We have two membership levels, members and liaisons, all of whom work in volunteer support and who are in good standing within the community. The grant also allowed the VSN to offer small fees for the presentation uh, of an expanded Skillshare programme and support for the annual meeting, which this year was organised and hosted online by Wikimedia Chile. And thank you very much again to Wikimedia Chile for that. So regarding this year's activity, we have more than 15 Skillshare, Skillshare sessions. And where people could share this technical uh, knowledge we need to 
deal with volunteering within the, the community. You know, Spanish is my main language, so I'm, and you know, I, I am clever at the Spanish. <laughs> so uh, these sessions were held with uh, around, I mean, at the long of the year, like almost it's one per month or a little bit more. We also do some peer-to-peer -peer, uh, sharing knowledge sessions. Um, this year we worked on Open Refine. We did also something on, on the even registration tool. We watched this new tool that we all welcome at the movement. And we also have worked with some climate, uh, climate activism within the Wikimedia movement, as well as it was how to help people to, man to manage activities within the movement as well. So it is a place where people who come into this position of being a volunteer supporter can get some tools and some ideas to help their community grow. We also did these sessions in three languages. We are trying to decenter English. It is still, we are speaking English, so it is still the main language of the project, but we also worked with French and Spanish this year, and we are open to work with other languages as well. Uh, we had more than 180 attendances within the, the whole program, and also we hold two surveys, which are aimed to understand what people need for, from the BCN and what we can do for them. We had this annual meeting that I was talking before. It was two days online meeting. Again, thank you, Carla, for the work done. And we were 18 of us under, trying to understand how we can move forward with the BCN and trying to see which is the best we can provide to our people after the pandemic, because we keep on doing some stuff that was more related to pandemic than to the actual uh, situation we are living so we are right now like having within internal conversation of how we can move forward with the BCN. Is it like that? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I think one of the things that's been really I'm going to move closer to this microphone. One of the things that I think has been really important to us is to be able to be responsive to what that our network, what our community really needs at this point in time. So some of the, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that we've had. Uh, one of the most interesting parts about co-running the project has been working in partnership across two chapters and two languages. We've managed the programme of activity over Telegram, email, Google Docs, Google Meets, while learning a lot about each other's time zones uh, and seasons. Um, this really isn't too different from working remotely uh, with others in the same country. However, we, we do have challenges both in terms of language um, and time zones. My Spanish is not <laughs> extensive enough in any way whatsoever um, to be able to deal with the, the sort of the work level of language. I think I can probably order two beers and, and find my way to the bathroom and that's about it. Um, <laughs> Although we have both been members of the VSN, we hadn't uh, worked together before. And so this first year of this partnership has been about learning how to work together um, across those two chapters, as well as the work of the network itself. In fact, yesterday was the first time that we'd ever met in person. <laughs> so... Um, we, as we are, as we mentioned, um, an increasingly multicultural network. We know that not everyone supporting volunteers across the movement has the same access to uh, uh, staff capacity um, and that we know that not everybody has even the same access to a reliable internet connection. As we grow in terms of size and variety of time zones, scheduling meetings which can suit that range becomes more and more difficult. One of the things that I think we, that we both think that we're going to need to look at next year is how we can take this really unique, really helpful, really valuable service, product, meeting, meeting of minds to other areas, other time zones, how we can, we can get people to talk to each other, to continue this work um, at times when uh, the rest of us would be in bed, basically. Um, one of the things that we found actually to be a real game changer was the use of live translation for Spanish and English at the annual meeting. This was a real step forward in terms of equity and exchange, but it does come at a high cost. Live translation is not cheap um, and it is really hard work. So, uh, yeah, massive props, massive thanks to um, anyone who's doing that for this conference, uh, anyone who does that, I hands down my full respect to you. Um, for meetings like this, for meetings like our annual meeting, where it is especially important that we are able to understand each other, it's definitely worth the money. 
we don't only see challenges, we also see opportunities within the VCN network. And one of our opportunities is that this is a specific place for people who support volunteers. So it is the place where we talk about what is a challenge for us, what is an opportunity for us, and also what we would like to learn or to understand from others to move forward with our task. It is a place which is based on peer-to-peer -peer learning, but we we are we really focus, we really want to keep this place as a safe space for sharing thoughts and experiences. So you will see that we do not record our meetings. It is internal meetings when, where we meet to understand and talk and exchange our experiences without making this public. We do have some recorded meetings, but those are the ones which are really technical and with a tool or something people would like to know and there is not that much information available within Commons or other platforms. So we also focus on capacity building for volunteer supporters and we, <laughs> and we really want we, 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 we have been and we are still a little bit the place where people who come into this new role to some of us, this was a new role for me like three years ago, being a volunteer supporter. This place is the place where you can learn from others. And as Sarah was saying before, not, other, not all the chapters have the same capacity to do like the accompaniment and the onboarding for people who is getting into this role. So this can be a place that helps people to understand what does it take to be a volunteer supporter. Yeah. Yeah, as, they, as we said, that uh, even if you have supported volunteers um, in other charities, mm -hmm. in other movements, supporting volunteers within Wikimedia can mean something very different. Mm -hmm. And we do also have people who, who come to us who have been doing other work within the movement, but this is their first time supporting volunteers in, in that particular capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really happy to be a place uh, where we see people coming in uh, now from, from different chapters and from different communities that we've not seen before. Yeah. And we find it really important to keep it as a safe space. We yeah. won't be changing this very soon, at least, because we also understand that this is a space when you find other people doing the same you are doing. You could also spot some, for instance, common conflicts within communities, so you can help each other to understand what could be the best way to get out of that conflict or to pace down the conflict. So it is a, it is a place where we where the peer-to-peer -peer support is the, the main focus, and we understand this is specific from of the BCN, and we want to keep it like that. Yeah. Um, we really hope um, that as the network grows and develops, um, by holding space for cross-cultural relationships to develop, we can, again, further build that capacity mm -hmm. within the movement for supporting volunteers. Um, looking to the future, we really hope that as these connections grow and as we build the infrastructure of the network and the trust between network members, that we will be in a position to be able to build on this with regard to matters happening across the movement that affect volunteers and affect those who support them. Hey, okay, key learnings. Uh, this is where I go off script because I didn't write this bit. So, uh, <laughs> intercultural competency. Is, has been my one of my great learnings um, from from uh, working with Vic and Mahu at uh, Wikimedia Argentina, um, and also within a group where often I am one of the only native English speakers, um, and I am aware that my accent is a bit strange, um, and I talk really fast, um, so even just some really basic things around that. But th this intercultural competency is a learning curve. It isn't the same as. Uh, just working with another team member in the same country who speaks the same language, has the same cultural background as you. Um, and it is a learning curve and you do need to give time for that. Mm -hmm. And it has massively, massively benefited the work that I do within my own community um, and the work that I've been doing elsewhere within the movement. Yeah, and it is also a competence that it is not only within the leading team, which is our relationship, it is also within the network. So we understand that we need to take some time to understand and to make place for different people and place people from different countries to come in, to understand each other, to help each other, and to make that network work in a, in a trust and by um, atmosphere. Yeah. 
absolutely. Um, what was the second one? Yeah, we believe that the Volunteer Supporters Network has something really unique to offer. Um, we don't believe that there is really anywhere else in the movement at the moment that is offering exactly what we do. Um, there are some excellent services and some excellent groups doing really good work. But what the Volunteer Supporters Network uh, really is there for is, is, is staff members and volunteers who are working to support volunteers within the network and offering that space where we can learn together, share best practice, share resources. Um, if you are in that position and you haven't been to one of our meetings yet, please do look us up on Meta. Uh, we would be delighted to have you. Decentering English, you want to take that one? Yeah, decentering English. Yeah, we really, we really believe decentering English is important. Right now, we are decentering English and uh, having much more Spanish within the network. But we understand that this is not enough. That this our movement is global and it's multicultural, and we will need uh, other languages to come in and take place and and time of the network. That is like one of the biggest challenges we see in the near future to do that step and to move forward to that. We yeah, we, I'm, I'm a translator in my, in my other life. So I, I understand that languages are really important and it's also difficult to do it. I mean, it's not just translating the content. It's being available for different differences to come in. And these are also different mindsets to come in because different cultures means that. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I take the building capacity yeah. text? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the first year we are doing this. We got this from Wikimedia Austria, Wikimedia Poland, who did a great work before uh, we got this network on our, yeah, <laughs> on our responsibility. So it took us quite a long time to understand what was the PC and really, I mean, in the daily work. And also we, we believe like Right now, it's a start in the moment in which, after understanding and getting to know how to do things well, we can move forward and, and open a little bit of the PCN to other ideas, other projects, and so on. So, uh, as you, well, you all know, the Wikimedia movement has a learning curve which is quite long and high, and it takes time <laughs> and help. So, the PCN is a little bit of the same. It took us a lot of time and help and mutual help to, to understand and to, to do this that we are doing that right now. It is somehow, I mean, it, it looks quite like simple, but it's like the meta situation of volunteering, you know, like when you get to volunteering and you understand the way the, the movement works, what is like the meta situation? You are supporting supporters. So, it's a little bit of a specific work. And so it's also get some insights and stuff that are, that is specific for for that role. Yeah. Um, and our last point on the learning, I think, is uh, has been about being open to feedback, um, and really listening to the community that you're trying to support, and being absolutely open to adjusting the program and adjusting the work, and being able to be agile in that to ensure that we're meeting the needs of our members. Okay. Um, one of our most successful uh, sessions last year, this year, last yeah. year, yeah, this year, um, was the peer-to-peer -peer session that, uh, that Vic ran, um, which was very much about sharing our experiences, sharing our highlights, sharing our challenges, um, rather than kind of one person taking the lead. Um, and that very much, we hope, um, will be one of the main features of our programme for the next year. Mm -hmm. Um, where are we? Six minutes left. Oh, excellent, right on time. Uh, we had our first in-person meetup for ages. <laughs> it's been a few years. Uh, so we, we managed to get some folks uh, together yesterday at the pre-conference event. Um, it was really lovely. I see a few faces here that we saw yesterday. Thank you so much for coming. Um, and it really, it reminded me especially just how much, um, how much we really need this space. Um, and how valuable it is and how wonderful it is to be able to gather again in person, um, to be able to meet with people, to be able to, um, yeah, to be able to network and meet other people who are doing the same work. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you for being there yesterday. There was a lot of people with the lag, a lot of people who couldn't arrive because they were still in their planes, or people being in other places like the GLAM conference, but it was really nice to see some faces and to see like, real people and not only Zoom screens. <laughs> so Reading. thanks for that. Um, we just came to the end and we of course are open to questions. <laughs>
like to see happen to support the opportunity. Like if I have time and money. But do you mean if you're a volunteer supporter, like what would you expect from you to do? No. Uh, hello, sorry. Okay. Uh, I mean, like, in the future, in the next year or two years, what mm -hmm. specific actions are you looking as a network to achieve? Or mm -hmm. what are you looking for support to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I've got a document about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been like the whole uh, afternoon yesterday talking about it. So <laughs> it's quite long. But I, I, as we told, one of the, of the, of the actions we want to do is like to expand a little bit, to have other people coming in, people from other languages. We are mo Right now it is Europe, Latin America, and we also have some people from Africa, but we, there is almost no one from Asia, so it would be great to reach a little bit of that uh, part of the world's community. We also would like to be more available for smaller groups, but we do understand it is a lot of work to train and help and support smaller groups which are not supported by the staff uh, of a chapter or who don't have like chapters around supporting them. So that's part of the ideas we've been having around, but it's also true that we need to understand how we can do that because of the, you know, like time zones. We are working, she's working in Europe, I'm working in a um, Latin American time zone. So reaching Asia, for instance. It means that I, well, you know, 3 a.m. meetings, this kind of stuff. So it's something you can do once or twice, but it's having a regular uh, work on this kind of uh, global uh, scenario. It takes like a lot of thinking on how we can, you know, coordinate and try to make this space spaces available. So this is one of our ideas, but we want to build this a little by little because we really need to focus on keeping the the space like a safe space and a, a space of trust to people who come in we want them to welcome and to be like little by little it is not the idea to have like from today and like tomorrow a hundred new people coming in it's like little by little of course everyone is welcome you just need to be a volunteer supporters to be here it's not like such a it is not full of requisites but it's also true that we need to go like smoothly so we can keep this trust within the people who take part of the network yeah, I think organic growth mm -hmm. um, is a really important phrase. Um, and I think that for us over the next year or so, building the connections between individual members of the, of the network is also really important for, again, coming back to that last point about understanding what the needs of the community are. Um, so, yeah, for me, that's, it's, it's building up uh, that sense of communication between members. Yeah, just one more, <laughs> because it made me think. Uh, yeah, there are two more. Yeah, it is also about how to connect communities that are not usually connected within the movement, like South South communities or communities of regions who don't really get in touch so, so frequently. So we have two more. Uh, we only one more question. No. Yeah, it's only the <laughs> OK, we have Sorry. to talk quick. Sorry. If we talk quickly, we yeah. can get more than one. OK. Cool. Thank for your contribution and your hard work. Congratulations. I'm very interested in the lessons about the center in English because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's one of the biggest challenge for many people in the movement do, that don't have the English as a language, primary mother language. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I will try to go quick. I know it's only one, but maybe. But yeah, the point is that we, we understand that if we do, don't do that, the people who is not English, like native or fluent speaking English, they don't feel welcomed. So we need to do that kind of movements to welcome more people. Right now it's just creating activities. We duplicate activities. One activity is in English and the same one is going on in Spanish. And we try to get like facilitators who speak more than one language. We did the same in French and we expect to do the same in other languages as well. Can we it's about it in terms of what we can ask because we do need to give time for the next presenter. Okay. I'm sorry. No, for the, if anyone else has questions, you can probably ask. Um, the presenters in the hallway or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I do. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great Wikimedia.